In this video, I'll be discussing the concept of enthalpy. Have you ever removed nail polish using acetone or sat in front of a fire? These might seem unrelated, but what your uh, skin is observing in the surroundings of these different chemical environments is known as a change in enthalpy. What we'll do in this video is describe the relationship between enthalpy and internal energy. It will be helpful to have watched the video on the introduction to thermochemistry to understand what internal energy is before continuing. We'll also differentiate between endothermic and exothermic processes and solve stoichiometry problems using changes in enthalpy. Enthalpy is a key quantity in the field of thermodynamics. It's given the symbol H and is defined as the internal energy plus PV where P is pressure and V is volume. As with internal energy, enthalpy depends only on the state of that system and not how the system arrived in that state. This is referred to as a state function. Generally speaking, we're interested in how a system is changing during a chemical or physical process. So we're expressing enthalpy as a change in enthalpy. The change in enthalpy is equal to the change in internal energy, E, plus P times delta V, the change in volume. As defined in a previous video, the change in internal energy is equal to the heat transferred and the work done either on or by the system. We defined uh, work in a previous video as negative P delta V. So if we think about P delta V, that's equal to, to negative work. You'll see why I wanted to do that in a second. Putting these findings together with the expression for enthalpy shows that the change in enthalpy is equal to Q plus W for the change in internal energy minus W. This simplifies to delta H is equal to Q. We add a subscript P to indicate that this is only true at constant pressure. You can think about the change in enthalpy for a process, therefore, as the heat exchange at constant pressure. Looking at these diagrams, we see the system indicated by the colorful square and the surroundings outside. In the case of the uh, blue box, this is an exothermic reaction. This occurs when the system is losing heat to the surroundings. This is indicated by the arrows pointing from the system out to the surroundings. An exothermic process results in a negative change in enthalpy. In other words, if since enthalpy is heat at constant pressure, the surroundings are warming up while the system is cooling down. This happens in the instance of sitting in front of a fire or a combustion reaction. The wood is combusted, which causes the system, the, the wood burning, to release heat to the surroundings. This is felt by your hand when you hold your hand near a fire. Now in the case of an endothermic reaction, um, described with the pink box, that occurs when the system gains heat from the surroundings at constant pressure. Here, delta H has a positive value because the surroundings are cooling down while the system warms up. This is true for the process of acetone interacting with your skin, such as for removing nail polish remover or nail polish, when you put the acetone on your skin and the acetone evaporates, your skin feels cold. This is because an endothermic process is occurring. Let's look at how enthalpy changes for chemical reactions. We'll use a generic chemical reaction, which is the reactants 2A forming the product AA. I'm using a generic delta H reaction here of negative 51.0 joules for this reaction. Based on this value for delta H, would you say that this reaction as written is exo or endothermic? 
This reaction is exothermic because the sign of delta H is negative, meaning delta H of reaction is less than zero. This means that heat is being released to the surroundings from the system. Now, what if instead of reacting two moles of A to generate one mole of AA, we react four moles of A to generate two moles of AA? In other words, doubling the reaction. In this case, what we'll need to do is take our delta H value shown here and multiply by two. So delta H of this new reaction will equal two times negative 51.0 joules, otherwise known as negative 102 joules. Heat in this case is still being released because we're still going from A to AA, as is shown in the original reaction. Now, what if we have the same initial reaction, but with half the quantities? In other words, converting one mole of A to half of a mole of AA. Delta H for this new reaction, we'll call it new reaction two, is equal to half of the original enthalpy change. And this is equal to negative 25.5 joules. This should make some rational sense because if we're reacting a lower quantity of A to generate a lower quantity of AA, we would expect heat to be released, but less heat to be released than in our initial case or in our new reaction shown above. Now, what if we had the reverse of our reaction, AA going to 2A? In this case, heat would be absorbed because we've, re we've flipped this reaction, meaning what were previously our products are now our reactants. To calculate delta H of our new reaction, we'll call it new reaction three, this would be equal to the original enthalpy, 51, negative 51.0 joules, but it would have the uh, reverse of the sign. So delta H of our new reaction three would be positive 51.0 joules. This is now an endothermic reaction because heat is absorbed. Let's put this into practice for a, an actual chemical reaction. Here's a reaction with delta H equal to negative 2,658 kilojoules. This corresponds to the reaction as written, which means one mole of methane reacts with two moles of oxygen to generate one mole of CO2 and two moles of water. When that reaction happens as written, 2,658 kilojoules of energy will be released. Therefore, this reaction is exothermic. Delta H has a negative sign, meaning heat will be released. Here's a sample problem you can do to look at the stoichiometry change or the sto uh, stoichiometry uh, practice with delta H values. Go ahead and pause the video and try this out. I'll show you the solution on the next slide. In this reaction, we are starting with our methane plus oxygen going to CO2 plus water. As written, this is for one mole of methane reacting with two moles of oxygen. What we're given in this problem is that we have five kilojoules, or five, excuse me, five kilograms of methane and excess oxygen. So that means that we are going to need to calculate how much um, what the change in enthalpy will be for this quantity of methane reacting with excess oxygen. Let's start by our, with writing our plan. What we'll need to do is convert kilograms of methane into grams of methane into moles of methane 
And that will allow for us to calculate the joules of energy required for this process, otherwise known as determining delta H. We can do this using a conversion factor, which is that delta H of the reaction as written is equal to negative 2658 kilojoules per one mole of methane. Again, this one mole of methane is coming from the stoichiometric coefficient in front of methane. To do this problem, we'll start out with our kilograms of CH4. We know from previous modules that there are a thousand grams in one kilogram. And we're given the molar mass of methane in this problem, so we don't even have to calculate it. It's given as 16.01 grams of methane per one mole of methane. Now comes the new part of our stoichiometry problem, which is that we can use the change in enthalpy of the reaction as a conversion factor. We'll put one mole of methane on the bottom because we need our moles of methane to cancel and negative 2,658 kilojoules of energy on the top. This is coming from our delta H value. When I did this calculation, I got that the enthalpy associated with five kilogram, or, uh, kilograms of methane reacting is equal to negative 8,000, uh, 800, sorry, negative 830,000 kilojoules. That's a lot of energy. It makes sense because five kilograms of methane is much greater than one mole of methane. We know again that one mole of methane weighs 16.01 grams. So this is a reasonable answer. In this video, I've discussed the relationship between enthalpy and internal energy, how we can differentiate between endo and exothermic processes using the sign for the change in enthalpy, and an example stoichiometry problem using a change in enthalpy. I highly recommend more practice with, this, uh, with these concepts through doing the practice problems on the homework or in any other sources. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.